reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you say the Lord's way is not fair. Here now, house of Israel, is not my way that is unfair, or rather are not your ways unfair. When someone virtuous turns away from virtue, to commit iniquity, it dies. It is because of the iniquity he's committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. Since he, is not, since he has turned away from the sins that he has committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. The sins of my youth and my frailties remember not. In your kindness, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. Remember your A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brethren, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interest, but also for those of others. Have you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient, even to the point of death, death on the cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, and that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bend, those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, for the glory of God the Father, the word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, What is your opinion? The man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not. But afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, Yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his, father, did his father's will? They answered the first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. And even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hi, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, so those watching live stream, you can see it's another house mass. All right? We have quite a crowd here today reminiscent of uh, when the worldwide pandemic was happening. <laughs> and I would celebrate mass in different houses uh, for groups such as this, I kind of had a, a, a home parish, 
right? And uh, let's hope that that is not coming again uh, because it surely would never be necessary. And hopefully the leaders of the church, the hierarchy of the church, have learned their lesson. I'm not convinced, right, that more people have learned their lesson than already understood the lesson back then. But there's a lot of lessons for us in this these readings here today. And one of the things that came to my mind is something that's really been um, on my mind lately in terms of social media. For those of you, well, most here are in, 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 on social media to different levels. And, and those who are watching, of course, you're already on social media at this moment. But uh, the fact that social media giving the platform to everyone that it does Everybody thinks that they're an expert on everything. Now, I'm not concerned about being an expert on anything else other than right now, this moment, for this homily, the church, the Bible, scripture, Catholic tradition, right? And everybody thinks they're theologians. Everybody thinks they're scripture scholars. Everybody thinks that they're enlightened. And not only that, everybody thinks they're going to heaven. Everybody thinks they're going to heaven, right? Um, and, and, you know, I, I just think that these readings are, are very apropos, right? Let, let's, for those of us, when we're on social media, okay, uh, uh, you know, Paul challenges everyone to be of the same mind, the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Well, we know that's not the case in the church. We know that's not the case in Christianity. We know that's not the case if you spend any time on social media. And social media is really a reflection of uh, where the culture is, where church is, where people's thinkings are. All right. And you can see that people are willing to enter into arguments and 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 enter into in divisiveness at the drop of a hat. It really is uh, mind-boggling. And uh, and so Paul right, warns us, right? Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves. I dare say the trapping in social media, the trapping today is we're always thinking of ourselves as smarter, than everybody else, right? Holier than everybody else. Matter of fact, those who follow me know that I'm um, I'm always talking about the competition to be holiest than thou, right? Uh, not holier than thou, holiest than thou, right? I gotta be the holiest. Uh, uh, each looking out not for his own interest, but for the others. I, I was I, I was on a. a I came across, as a matter of fact, I don't scroll, so it popped up on my news feed, uh, a group called Catholic Strong yesterday. And there was, a, there was a gal who was asking for prayers and a um, single mom, well, not a single mom, she was a mom of two children. I subsequently found out that her husband uh, was uh, applying for disability, couldn't work anymore. Uh, and they'd not gotten disability checks and, uh, and, and, uh, I'm, I'm reading all of it. And she didn't ask for money. She didn't ask for anything other than prayers. And I'm going down 30 people, all right, answering, you know, well, do this and do that and do this and do that. And I'm saying to myself, dang, she's, she's, she, she's said she's concerned about it feeding her family now. She had lost her job and she was looking for another job. So I went to her profile and checked out every picture going back years and years and years. So it wasn't a phony profile. Sure enough, she's a, she's a mom of two young kids and pictures there with her husband and, you know, and she's on a Catholic site and, and everything else. So I messaged her. And I said, tell me a little bit about yourself and tell me uh, a little bit about your Catholic faith and tell me a little bit about your need. And because, of course, I wanted to hear, because if you're if you're used to dealing with the scammers on social media, 
They always talk a certain way. They, they always, you know, they always say, ah, you're always saying the right things, right? And so I'm, I'm astute enough to, to know, right? And I became convinced, right, that this, this woman was, was legit, 100% legit. So nobody else offered to help her other than, well, there's food banks and there's try this and social services. I said, I'm sending you 500 bucks. I'm sending you 500 bucks. And, and she was blown away. Right. And then later in the day, she came back and she 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 was telling me how hurt she was. And she was thanking me again, how somebody on the post had accused her of being a scammer. Right. Being a scammer. Right. And I just thought this is this is so typical social media. Everybody wants to give advice, tell everybody else what to do. But never thinking, wow, well, may, maybe our Lord is calling me to help this person, right? And I checked in with her last night, and I'm still the only one who was willing to give her any money, right? And, of course, my ministry is blessed enough where I can give them 500 bucks. Uh, I want to thank half the people here because you contribute <laughs> to my ministry. You help this woman in need, all right? Um but I, I find that interesting, that mindset, right? And we, and, and I'm, I'm not, again, saying I'm holier than thou. I fall into this all the time, all the time. Um, and, and it's, and it's human nature. But really, it's a matter of us stopping and stepping back. And really thinking things out, right? And thinking in a supernatural way. What is our Lord asking me? Is he asking me of anything? What is he telling me to do, right? Uh, and, and maybe we'll come up with a different answer if we just, if we just stay in social media mode, right? Uh, uh, so I, I, that, that's, that's one point. Uh, the other point is I think the importance of us reflecting on our own obedience, on our own, own obedience. We are quick to look for other people who we don't think are obedient enough. And I'm gonna use the gospel, and, and those of you here who you've heard me preach enough times should probably have already heard me preach on what I'm about to say. But this gospel, this gospel, <laughs> right? Uh, Jesus used to convict the Pharisees. But I thought the first time I read this gospel, the thing that came to my mind is, what if we were sitting there, right? What if we were sitting there in the room and we watched both all right, interactions happen, right? And, and not knowing anything else, right? And then Jesus came to us and said, who was the obedient son? We'd all get it wrong. We'd all get it wrong. We'd all say, oh, well, the, the one who said he was going to go out into the field. But he, he didn't go, right? And I think that this is an important lesson for us. Because we do tend to judge on snapshots. Now, we, we have to judge behavior. There's no doubt about it. I'm not going to get into this, this whole biblical idea of judging and how many people have skewed ideas of, oh, do not judge, lest thee be judged. But one of the things we should never do is judge based on a snapshot, right? a snapshot in somebody's lives, because you don't know how people change over a period of time, and it might be a short period of time, not even a long period of time, right? You, you see this also on social media all the time where certain people have, have conversions and everybody's rejoicing in the conversion. And then somebody else has had a conversion and they're in a certain point, but because we don't particularly like that person, we throw their past into their face as if their conversion was not a legitimate conversion. But we're willing to accept the conversion of anyone who all of a sudden says, ah, I'm becoming Catholic, right? <laughs> um, this, this, is, this is human nature. It's impulsive. Uh, and I think it's a good reflection for us to, uh, to understand really the first reading, because the first reading really is all about persistence, 
persevering in humble, loving obedience, right? Persevering in humble, loving obedience. Uh, we need to persevere to the end to wear the crown. Thank God for Christ's mercy. And that's, of course, where the uh, uh, the uh, uh, opening antiphon and the and the. Uh, uh, the responsorial psalm comes in, this whole idea of thank God for his mercy, because if we do fall into these pits of disobedience, if we return to Jesus, he will forgive us. And one of the things that we should be mindful of in the first reading, even though this is Old Testament, that the greatest sign of somebody being repentant, of having contrition, is a change in behavior. Not just saying I'm sorry, but does your behavior change, right? And that's really what our Lord is looking for. This change in behavior, this change in attitude, this change in mindset. But persevering in obedience, and that's the lesson of Christ, being obedient even unto death, death on the cross. He was perfectly obedient in his life. He persevered in obedience. The Blessed Mother persevered in obedience, right? Uh, there's a, there's a, a, a passage in Scripture where it said that Jesus was resolutely determined on his journey to Jerusalem resolutely determined. We should be resolutely determined to be obedient, to grow in holiness every day. And one of the ways that we grow in holiness is not uh, looking to see who we're holier than, right? Uh, but to maybe emulate holiness in others, even though we never should really think that we are uh, uh, less holy than other people because we just don't know, right? That's why personal sanctification, personal holiness, self-reflection every single day, uh, you know, asking how can I do better, right? How can I be holier? How, what more can I do to sanctify myself? Um, uh, and, and, and how much more can I immerse myself in Christ's mercy? That ultimately, my brothers and sisters in Christ, is, and that's evident in the responsorial psalm and the opening antiphon, what we should be most thankful for. That we have Christ's mercy that gives us the opportunity to be sanctified, the opportunity to grow in holiness, uh, and uh, then, uh, and and that is what we should be thanking our Lord for each and every single day.